Hi everyone, it's August 2nd, 2018. This video is primarily about the ultra low frequencies that I've been seeing in California. And this GOES 16 site that I'm going to show you and ask you, well, if you know anything about reading the GOES 16, please leave a comment below. But before I get to that, I tried to get an update on the car fire. Now, considering that this fire has now entered the Redding area, the Redding proper, I would think that there would be um, more homes, the numbers would have changed, the acreage, I can't find anything. So if anybody knows um, what is happening? I just came across this article. Car fire, families photos captured devastation inside Reading city limits. And that looks pretty horrible. And this was uh, within the last hour. God, what's happening in California is really just, it's beyond horrific. All right. Um, so on the car fire, I don't have anything new to say. On the Mendocino complex fire, the ranch and river fire, it seems to be raging on. This was posted at 11 a.m. Uh, San Francisco Chronicle. So there are three hours behind me and it's five o'clock. So this was posted um, at about 2, 2 p.m my time it's it seems to have doubled in size I think it was two days ago I posted a video and it was it had burned I think 50,000 acres maybe I'm wrong 50,000 or 74,000 one of those was my latest update so now it's 110,000 acres. So this Mendocino complex fire consisting of the ranch fire and river fire led Lake County Sheriff's Office to order people living in Blue Lakes, Upper Lake, Nice, Lakeport, Witter, Springs, Bachelor Valley, Scotts Valley, Saratoga Springs to evacuate. Oh God. Um, this came in after that, just like an hour after. So some of the mandatory evacuations have been lifted. But here, the Ranch and River Fire has burned 110,168 acres. It's 39% contained. The larger fire, Ranch Fire, that's 15% contained. The River Fire is 50% contained. I don't know, I guess they just averaged it uh, somehow to come up with 39% contained for this Mendocino complex fire, which is the ranch and river fire combined. So the if, if you need any of this information, if you know people or you're in this area, click on the link below, but uh, mandatory evacuations have been reduced to warnings. Mid Mountain Road, Pine Avenue, it's the area of Potter Valley, north of Burris Lane, east of East Side Potter Valley Road. Well, that's the west of the Fire Edge. Um, it doesn't seem, it seems bizarre that they're just lifting or reducing an evacuation to a warning for just this one little tiny area. Um, I will link below to this. This is an interactive home destroyed map. Oh, thank you. Um, the car fire. All of these homes. All of these homes destroyed. Let me see if I can... It doesn't have a... Uh, I can't get it full page, but 
We're talking a lot of homes. It's over a thousand now. So much for the interactive map. Okay, here. Click on it. Destroyed. Destroyed. Um, I guess if you really zoom in, you can get the information on each home and yeah you can actually get the address or the road that the home is on look how spotty yeah the embers must have just flown right to these homes just these homes. This also has a map, the car fire. See how it's it's come into Reading. 121,049 acres. It's 35% contained. 35% contained. How long has this been going on? Several weeks. Didn't the Mendocino complex fire or these ranch or river fires start about a month ago? All right. This is right now, this is the national mosaic. I have been seeing a lot of ultra low frequencies being set off in areas that I have not seen on the national mosaic, they being set off um, inland. I see the ultra low frequencies being set off the coast, but not inland, and I'll show you that in a moment. But um, the ultra low frequencies, when you go on this site, like after midnight, you will see we are being pummeled, absolutely pummeled, with these frequencies, especially on, well, from Texas all the way to the east, south, it's just filled. Like the, the south half from Texas to the east coast is just loaded with these ultra low frequencies. But let me take you to Diggy, um, come on computer, Diggy do it this video that he posted July 29. I'm going to let you listen to a few minutes and then I'm going to show you some more ultra low frequencies from I think the 29th to earlier this morning August 2nd. What about some signatures I saw on a video I did and uh Let's see, going back to Happy Bale's video. I want to need to know where Lakeport, Lake County, California was. So there it was. Let yeah. me interrupt you, Diggy Do It. Just to say, Patty, oh, if you hear this, could you leave a comment letting us know that you are okay? Patty lives right where these fires are, and her area was evacuated. And I'd really like to know how you are doing. I hope you are okay. Let's get back to Diggy Do It. Too far from uh, Reading. And I got to thinking about, I know I'm all over the map, but here, I got to thinking about the sulfur dioxide gas emissions that I've seen that I noticed just prior to these fire, wildfires starting near Yosemite, wait, Yosemite. In Reading, where well, there's there was sulfur dioxide signatures before the wildfires. Okay, well, so keeping all that in mind, I wanted to go to College of DuPage website. Now, this is where it gets kind of messed up because it's hard to do it. It's flickering and it's going to stop. I got it magnified, but uh, I've got it on sub regional sectors over Northern California and. I've got it on NT Microphysics, okay, 
and two microfluidics on 200 frames. All right, now I left the GLM flash signatures on up here in the menu. I'm going to try the best I can to show you the flashes that are occurring just before these, some of these wildfires are starting. Let's see what we got here. Oh, that's messed up. Okay, it'll, it'll get there. Let's see. Okay, let's see. All right, once we get the flickering done, I want you to notice this area right here and these two areas there. Now, what they've done is they've washed it out with some kind of purple color because what they're trying to do with their energy is you'll see the flashes is they're trying to start the fires. And they'll get a plume. And then they'll die out, and they'll get a pool, and they'll die, but then they'll finally get it going. Same thing over here. I think your uh, lake port's over there. I'm not sure. Just gonna watch it for a minute. Watch how the uh, watch how the energy patterns occur right before the uh, smoke blooms. I'm gonna stop it. Look at all those chemtrails. Very interesting. Unless I'm interpreting it wrong, I'm seeing these flashes occur. Because they're trying to start the fire. See, they got it blotched out. And, and especially this one, watch. They're, they're working heavily with that electrical uh, activity, trying to get that fire started. And watch, it'll finally get going. See that poof poof? Poof poof. Oh no, oh, they, they got it. They got it going. Good boys. Let's see if they can get these ones going over here. Come on, fellas. Don't bring two sticks together. Some laser sticks you got. There you go. Up here too, look at them all. Look at all the, the energy flashes underneath the uh, blotches that they obfuscated the view with. Well, this is not uh, available that much longer, but uh, if you go into the sub-regional sectors of your area, if, they, if you have a wildfire started, go into the uh, anti-microphysics color product, and also, I'm going to zoom out of here. All right, so this is the video, and I, I captured to make some still pictures. These are harp nectarad rings off uh, the coast of California, but you, if you can see all of the very defined lines, these are signatures of ultra low frequencies being set off in California. Uh, this red area, which I have seen, I didn't see it before, but I, it's there an awful lot and it's uh, in the, the Sacramento area I don't know exactly what that red dot is but this is July 30 the first one that you saw was July 29 this is July 30 224 a.m. another signature of the harp next red ring that's the high frequencies that they can emit from Doppler radar. The ultra-low frequencies can come from ultra-low frequency transmitter sites or these Gwen towers that we have all over the place. So these ultra-low frequencies, you know, how many I have been seeing inland California, it's concerning to say the least. You can see the ultra low frequencies right there, the very defined lines that jut out and fan out. You may not see the complete circle of the fan. These frequencies are directional, so they can actually direct them to target areas. 
and these frequencies can do so much damage. Okay, so I went on this site. I don't know how to read it. One of the reasons why I'm posting this video is if you know how to read this, I would really like some input. Now you see that little white dot in the middle of that yellow circle? These flashes appear. For, it's like in just a split second. There's another flash next to the more dominant flash. But what is being emitted from it's jutting off that area. So these flashes I think that's what Diggy Do It was talking about. The, uh, I think those in the square are the chemtrails. But whatever is being emitted right from that area that juts off the coast and you'll see it, it's very clear right there right underneath the chemtrails. What is being... I don't know what that is. If anybody has an, any ideas. But these flashes. Now this is the Redding area. And this was... Um, what is it? July uh, 31st? So yeah, I just made it very clear to you what we're looking at and I do not know what is coming off that coast coastline there's another flash I wish I did know how to read this but and we're talking like seconds you'll see it just a second and it was very hard to capture them to get the stills. So this too is July 31st. The ultra low frequency is a little bit hard to see in here, but if you get up close and personal with your screen, you'll see them. Yes, I should have zoomed in and I wasn't thinking. Um, very close to the Reading area, but these frequencies can extend 300 miles. So the frequencies are right there. These are the stills. This is what you should be looking at. The arrow right there in the yellow, uh, it might be a Nectrite Hawk ring. You see all of the very fine lines up here in the top square. But the Nectrite Hawk rings are in Nevada. And I go on these sites pretty regularly and you know, I don't see what I've been seeing as these fires continue to rage on. And yes, they can use frequencies to create abrupt winds, change the winds, make a fire very erratic. This is a little later, August 1. The flashes appear again. Not as much. And you really have to pay very close attention to see them. If there's a way to slow down this loop, I haven't figured it out, but what the hell is being emitted from just that one little area? that I just pointed to. See the flashes? I caught those. I circled whatever is being uh, I don't know what it is. So yes, you know, you don't have to leave comments saying I'm an idiot, yada yada yada. I'd like to know what we are looking at. I slowed this down a bit and you'll see the flashes right there. Uh, two flashes. And I slowed it down even more. And you'll see these flashes appear. One, 
to right where the right where my cursor is. Right there. Two. A few going. So and this is um, August 2nd. This is earlier this morning with more ultra low frequencies being set off right smack in the area where the fires are. And having heard Jerry Brown claim that huh, it's all about climate change once again, hearing them talk about how how we are going to be seeing more of these fires this year, very concerning. Very concerning indeed. So here I am on this site right now, 5.39 p.m. East Coast, August 2nd, nighttime microphysics imagery, College of DuPage, 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 um, and we've got a lot of flashing going on. Got a lot of flashing going on. Look at what, what are all, it, are these all of the chemtrails? Are they spraying things that are flammable we don't know, but once again, we have an awful lot, oh, now being emitted from both. Right here, from this point and this point. Let's wait until it loops. Okay, so what is all of this? And it does look like it's coming from land and being pushed up into Oregon. But can you see these flashes? Right down here. I'd like to know what they are. And yeah, guys, I am way too tired. I can't research every little thing. I can't go and learn what's in these exact locations. If anybody wants to do it and give me the information, fine, but look at all of this. And then it looks like something is pushed off right here. These are chemtrails. Here. Look how this just blossoms, and whatever the hell that was. I don't know how to get through to people who just want to believe a lie. But it does seem that we've got more Americans wanting to believe lies than interested in the truth. Boom. And that's killing us, guys. These lies are killing us. The acceptance of the lies, it's killing us. And I, for one, am really tired of looking at this devastation taking place and then listening to the disgusting governor of California. I will link below. Where it historically was. Anything practical the state well, can do to have mitigate? Well, we a forest management task force uh, to do uh, plan, uh, you know, uh, plan burnings to thin out the forest. Uh, there's also, you know, there are a number of things, uh, both in warning and having enough trained personnel uh, being ready. So there's lots of practice. People are doing everything they can, uh, but nature is very powerful and. And we're not on the side of nature, we're fighting nature. You're damn it's straight, you're fighting it. Uh, material we're putting in the environment. That's right, material. the material yeah. you are putting in the environment. And he wants you to believe that that material is, well, you drive a car, you breathe, your cows fart. The material that they are fighting nature with 
is the geoengineering that you just saw right here. All of these lines, the chemicals, the heavy metals, the nanoparticulates, aluminum, barium, strontium, strontium uh, lithium, the black carbon dust that creates these heat waves that many are suffering and dying from. And how do you get people? How do you get people to believe? Or forget about believing. How do you get them to just research to find out what this Jerry Brown is all about? What so many people are all about? Oh my God. Well, it was a brilliant war. I shouldn't say that 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 it's in the past tense, my God. I believe that we are just seeing a fraction of the destruction that they're going to be bringing to everybody. Yeah, unconventional weapons. If there are not bombs dropping, if there are not bullets flying past people's faces, then they just can't get that these frequencies that so many of us have shown over and over and over again, all of the documentation, all of the papers, all of the studies, military, scientific, all of the evidence, what these frequencies are doing and you just can't get through to people. Well, that just means that more and more life is going to die. Sorry to end like this, but that is the truth.